Welcome back. You're still watching African Perspective with me, Alden Simpia, standing in for Tepiso Marqueta. It is still, it will still take time before the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is fully implemented. Certain aspects of how exactly it will work still needs to be ironed out. Tomorrow, a conference will be held in Johannesburg, and it seeks to interrogate the Africa frame, the framework rather, around um, the free trade agreement and opportunities it will untap in terms of intra-country trade between African states to unpack how the free trade agreement should be implemented and what impact should each of the regions have on the continent. Joining me tonight to discuss this further, we have the regional director for the Sub-Saharan Africa of Frederick Noman Foundation, Jules Martin, as well as the executive director of the Center for Development and Enterprise at the Great Lakes region, Amabel Maricariza, who's joining us in studio. Thank you guys so much for joining us this evening. Uh, Amabel, let's start with you. Why is this so important? I find that when you walk around um, the country and you ask anyone, like at least in South Africa, you ask them about the, the free trade agreement, they don't understand what, we what we're talking about. Thank you so much. Uh, the agreement is very important for Africa, especially uh, in, in African countries where uh, uh, we live in poverty. You know, uh, five of ten top uh, countries in Africa still in poverty. So free trade is the best solution for this issue because free trade means uh, a change between uh, uh, NDVD, between uh, businessmen to do uh, what people need today in this Africa. So the agreement uh, come uh, after other region mm. uh, uh, economic agreement we have uh, agreement from East Africa, mm -hmm. ECOWASO, and so on. But uh, the different uh, uh, these agreements uh, doesn't uh, uh, get solution for uh, issue we have in Africa. So the the new agreement is the new project, which means uh, they have uh, a vision to give opportunity for more people in Africa to give. Uh, a chance, uh, a, digni a dignity for more people mm -hmm. in Africa, truth, uh, low uh, barriers to do, mm -hmm. uh, to trade between uh, different countries mm -hmm. in Africa. Jules, do you find that when you speak to business, especially small business, that they get the sense of what this exactly is? I, I imagine that for some small businesses, it's actually quite quite scary, mm -hmm. this whole idea of free trade, whereas it is exactly for small and medium-sized businesses yeah. that it offers all kinds of opportunities that they do not have mm -hmm. at, uh, at, at the moment. You know, if, if you realize that for some African countries it's easier to trade with Europe than yes. it is to trade with their neighboring countries. Of course, if you, if you could do that, you could produce products of a higher quality, which mm -hmm. means uh, uh, better jobs mm -hmm. uh, that you can give and more opportunities, especially for small uh, medium-sized mm. uh, enterprises, so it would it would be great for Africa if this would if this would work out. I think, especially for a country like South mm. Africa. Yeah. And looking at the stats, uh, the president, South African president in London at that Financial Times um, event, speaking about exactly this, the free trade agreement, and some of the stats that he came up with. For me, it was very shocking to find out that amongst each other, amongst the 55 countries, trade is only standing at around 15 percent. Yeah. Why? What has been the stumbling blocks all along? I, I think there are, a lot of, there are a lot of interests in keeping things as they are. Because if you have these tariff barriers, it means that products have to be imported. So mm -hmm. you have people everywhere who can earn money out of this, yeah. out of the, out of this trade. And that means that it, is, it seems not so attractive to get mm. rid of it, but it's true, 15% is absolutely staggering. Uh, Intra-European trade is four times as high. Yeah. In, in Intra-Asian trade is more than three times as high. So you, it, it is absolutely a, a, a missed opportunity. I think there are probably historic reasons mm -hmm. uh, why mm -hmm. that is the mm -hmm. case. Uh, but here is this unique opportunity to do something about it, yeah. and it's important that it's grasped, uh, yeah. grasped with both yeah. hands. D do you believe that um, all countries are indeed ready to do this? Uh, 
Do yes. you think so? <laughs> because <laughs> I, I, it would seem that even with the, with the negotiations, that uh, it took a while to get everybody yes. on, on board. Well, mm. at least not everybody. You only have, what, like 54 mm. countries that are signatories. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, all countries, uh, uh, if according to the history, if yeah. according to the different, what I talk about, the region economic agreement, mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, before the African cultural agreement, before that, we have uh, other agreement. And according to the different agreement we have before, mm. uh, uh, that is what Julius say also, the trade between Africa is still the same, but mm. uh, trade uh, between Africa and uh, Europe to more increased than Africa. So uh, I think uh, if you, the first agreement was fair, mm. why the second will be a good opportunity? I don't know, but I think uh, there are still barriers there yeah. and many countries uh, still have uh, uh, the mentality to still uh, in the same uh, place mm -hmm. in the same uh, with the same policy that is means uh, most of the uh, countries we have leaders who still national idea mm -hmm. nationalist Quite idea nationalist, yeah. uh, who think to block uh, uh, internal Products, protectionist uh, protection, as well. yes, mm. that is the big issue you have in Africa. Second, we have another issue through uh, institution. You know, we have already this agreement, but remember, uh, the institution, the local institution, is the the organ or the institution who which will be there to mm -hmm. to mm. Uh, to do or to make sure we have these agreements mm. in the land, the area. So yeah. that is means the first. Uh, issue will be focused, it will be institutional. The local institution, public institution, uh, still have some barriers like mm. law, fees, corruption, bureaucracy, yes. poor governments, mm -hmm. and so on. So that is the big issue you have until now in Africa. Uh, it's not only that, that we have a, a disappear of rule of law. Mm. So that is make the stability of uh, political stabi instability. So mm. we have, uh, we still have uh, a big issue uh, because we we have uh, the best institution mm. who which can make better mm. these agreement. Uh, Jules, before we move on to the summit that will be taking place tomorrow. Um, do you think that, for instance, early on we were speaking um, with the ladies from Fwit about um, in front of the Security Council about the conflicts that are taking place on the continent. And of course, there is Silence the Guns by, what was it, uh, 2030? I think 2030? The guns are, 2020? Yeah, the Silence the Guns by 2020. That isn't happening. Do you think that that's one of the reasons um, that there is this fear even amongst um, countries on the continent to invest in each other's economies? It, it, it is probably partly a reason, although the, the, the number of conflicts yeah. It's actually going down. Mm -hmm. uh, also, also in Africa, the, the conflicts that are there are vicious and are terrible. Uh, but, but the number of conflicts and also conflicts within countries has actually gone down mm -hmm. in Africa in the, in the past decade or so. So there, are, there should be more opportunities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, th I think what's so exciting about Africa compared with the rest of the world is the biggest capital that Africa has, true yeah. for South Africa, but other countries too, is there are so many young people who really want to do something yeah. with their lives. The problem is that most of the people running African countries are not so young. And mm -hmm. there is this enormous gap between the two. But if you look at young people, they want a dynamic economy. They want to be able to also to, to work abroad and yeah. to, to export and to import and to, to grasp all these yeah. opportunities. And, and you that's, find that that's the a gift that we can give Even the them. innovation seems to be outpacing the policies. Ab absolutely. Yeah. If, absolutely. If, if, if you look, for instance, with what's happening with social media, the, the summit that will be taking place um, starts tomorrow. Yes. What are some of the key aspects that you guys will be focusing on? I'm able, you can go first. Yes, we, we got to focus uh, uh, the opportunity uh, we have through this new agreement. We go also talk about uh, uh, the different uh, issue which can uh, make this agreement uh, uh, don't be down in different Africa. We go also try to to talk about uh, uh, why it's very important to have uh, this agreement to 
for many people who stay in poverty today mm -hmm. in Africa. So we go to share with, uh, we have different people from different corners of the world who go to, to share off uh, with us. Uh, the, the, the airport is for this agreement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And s something you want to add, Jules? It's very difficult to build such, build such a free trade agreement. Mm -hmm. And it will not happen by itself. Mm -hmm. So what we need is actors in, in, in civil society, uh, uh, politicians, journalists, experts, academics, and so on, to follow this process very closely and to make sure that governments cannot let down, mm -hmm. that, they, that they will really mm -hmm. implement this treaty and that it will move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, it will not happen by itself because it's not an easy process. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you, need, you need to get a certain push. And we hope that with our conference, with, with, which has participants from, from about mm -hmm. 10 different countries, uh, that that will give that push yeah. uh, uh, and that, that, that we can collectively put this pressure on governments and on mm -hmm. the African Union to really continue to make mm -hmm. progress. W will you also be focusing on um, trade dispute resolution? Uh, absolutely, because that's what will be one of the crucial yeah. uh, elements of this of this whole agreement. You need you need you need that, yeah. and you need a bigger unity among African countries to negotiate with you know, big big countries as well, with the United States, with mm -hmm. the European mm -hmm. Union. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to negotiate if you are one. Uh, than, than, than every country by itself trying to get a slightly better deal than, than the other country, which is what happened. Power in the, the numbers. Uh, yeah. Yes, that's uh, at the moment that's not working so well for Africa. Mm -hmm. But you know the, the African governments have it in their own hands mm -hmm. to to improve that, and and we want to make sure that we follow that process and that we say, look, yeah, mm -hmm. this is a good step ahead, or maybe that isn't, and you should do better. Yeah, and Mabel, can you just quickly comment on issues concerns that have been raised around information. Um, some businesses have said that some of the data that you get out of the African countries are not reliable. Uh, so it becomes really difficult even to make business decisions whether you want to go in or not because the data that you get is data that's outdated. Uh -huh. uh, for example, to do business in East Africa, mm -hmm. still one the mango for issue for uh, uh, most of the people there. Uh, for example, we have uh, a kind, uh, kind of product called cassava. Is the cassava? I don't know here. We, we use it. Mm -hmm. It's cassava fava. We can take uh, uh, cassava from Uganda to Burundi. If you take it uh, for uh, each morning, and when you get it to Burundi, we in the border we ask him. We ask you uh, another uh, uh, tax. Mm -hmm. What is called it? Uh, the the revenue from tax so the revenue from the product product so that is one the big issue if you the our country don't understand uh, these uh, tariff you make in uh, in trade mm -hmm. is one the uh, the consequence of the situation we have in Africa so that is the uh, one the example I can give. So there is different business yeah. between countries. They are internal uh, business, but also external uh, business. Mm -hmm. People try to do to try through this business to help their family to mm -hmm. get of poverty. Uh, uh, through their this bus their business, they can uh, educate their yeah. their children. They can uh, access to the best. Uh, uh, school, best hospital. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, uh, one the uh, the the issue. The country, most of the country, Africa, still resolve. Yeah. And uh, if you resolve th that, I think uh, it will be uh, the Africa you, you talk about perspective. The next, the best Africa you need. The best perspective. It's, Africa it, it will be a, a, be there. It will be a step in the <laughs> right direction. And President Cyril <laughs> Ramaphosa saying that he expects um, intra. Africa trade to increase by at least 25% um, by 2040. We'll be watching this development closely as well. We're going to go to a quick ad break, and when we come back, SADC and the elections.